Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today, we're going to be talking about differential signaling. We've been talking about single-ended, you know, highs and lows, but we're going to talk about a signal that's more about the difference between two voltages. What that allows us to do is go higher speeds, longer cable lengths, and better resistance to noise. Let's check it out. All right, up until now, I've been talking about single-ended. You've heard me talk about CMOS voltage levels, LV, you know, low voltage TTL levels, all kinds of voltage levels in between. All of those worked by voltages above ground, which meant noise on ground, noise on the voltage, all translate directly into noise on the signal, and I'll talk about that a little more. But now we're talking about differential. This is how you urinate with the big canines, right? This is the how you get high speed signals on and off your designs it's all around us uh, in the old days we used lots of parallel connectors right these days like you see a SATA line instead of an IDE line because we can get a pair of wires to go so much faster we get rid of all those parallel wires and you can use lots of fast parallel wires too and even go crazier but the the idea of the fast serials all around us you see it in your HDMI video you see it in SATA you see it in uh, Ethernet and you know the, the you hear of cat5 that's the physical specification for how to get that voltage down long lengths of cable tossed not over your fluorescent light but close to it and it's it, this is how we get the stuff in and out and how we do it quickly so we got to talk about it because it's differential which means the difference between two lines there's now two wires and I'm going to show you the symbols in a second for this it it's not about how much above ground it is where the noise can get in high and low it's how much noise is there between the terminals okay it's, it's because it adds and subtracts the differences between these two voltages that are like a twisted pair is an easy way to think about it. So noise that gets on both of them actually gets canceled out. And I'm going to show you about that a little bit further. Uh, real quick, the standards I'm talking about. I, today we're going to talk about low voltage differential signaling more than anything else because it's so prevalent. LVDS. Uh, it, on the output of your FPGAs, your gate arrays, all those things, it's actually a selection. I'll show you that. Um, you, you can see there, there are different standards also, low voltage PECL, PECL, which is the positive emitter coupled logic, which is left from the old days. I still have books behind me that I keep handy for ECL. It's how I first got into the high speed stuff, still prevalent today, still very valid today. Let me show you something about the symbols and the, the example of noise and we'll go from there. Here's how I've been drawing the single ended or the standard TTLH, these are I.O. ports you might see, these are CMOS, you know, those are the technologies. But at the end of the day, most ports that aren't meant to drive a, a, a long distance or a high speed signal are single ended. And, you know, whether this is an AND gate, a buffer or whatnot, it typically drives a voltage above ground, above a threshold. We call it a high, it drives it near ground, below another threshold, we call it a, a, a low, and we measure that to ground. Now, one of the things that can happen is that noise that gets on that, that drives it up and down. Remember AM radio, how, how it was amplitude modulation, but noise was amplitude, so you ended up listening uh, to static usually uh, mixed in with your signal, at least for us old enough to remember that. That's what happens when noises get on the single end or the high voltage. We also have ground noise, and this can be very prevalent on a circuit board. You might have motors, you might have all the logic and just other things that induce in here, even hums and stuff. You could have a jackhammer, as I've shown. And I'm not kidding, there's some very noisy things that can climb on a ground. And if you share the ground, see I've shown even an earth ground and, and the logic ground, um, all of those currents and voltages that add up in your, on your ground end up adding up when you're trying to make the difference between the single ended high and the single ended low which is near ground. The signal can get noisy, the ground could get noisy. Here's how we show a differential signal and now there is no single output from like the tip of this that like I showed. We show it as a pair of wires because it's the difference between the pair of signals and so this is the positive, this is the negative or really it's the inverting, non-inverting and if we do not do in bubbles we'll use a P or an N sometimes to denote it and a one might drive this one high and a one would drive this one low, a logic level one. 
put over each other, this is what they look like. We find that they're swapping directions. Now, what's cool in standards like LVDS is that the current remains the same. It just swaps. So we, you know, if you've ever turned on your water and shut it off and you get that water hammer effect, that ta-dong, you can get that with voltages, you know, a voltage on, voltage off, ta-dong. But if you've got the same amount of flow and it's just switching directions, it's, it's less noisy for the system as a whole. So it's not a bad way to start. Now, if we show the effects of noise, all right? Uh, what I've shown is a noise, and where there's current, there's an induced electromagnetic field, which can induce a current, which looks like a voltage, uh, into the wires that we're using here. So I've shown it in the middle because I wanted to show that, like with twisted pairs or wires that are close to each other or traces on a PC board, the noise tends to be induced into both so that uh, you'll see the same spike on both of them going in the same direction. Well, since this is differential, we are only measuring the difference. If the noise is common to both, it tends to cancel. I say tends because in real life, there's a little bit of things go on. But if it's common to both, it's not counted. And if it's a difference between the two, it is counted. Now, you'll notice uh, that I've grayed out the, the ground. It has a lot less to do with this. Um, there's a limit to how far away from ground we can get, called common mode and stuff like that. Uh, but now the noise on the signal on the grounds are not near as prevalent because we're looking for noise to only be the difference between the two differential signals. So to demonstrate um, differential, or uh, you know, and I'll be doing the LVDS standard, otherwise known as the TIA EIA 644. And you know, that's that's good for like up to three gigabits per second, just to give you an idea of the speeds we're talking about. And again, this is why it's so easy to use a pair of twisted wires rather than lots of parallel connections. And you know, this is how we do the high definition video these days and everything is, is with this technology. So uh, for example, I could go to, I went to TI's website. Here's a little selector. We see, oh, there's the picture of what I want and the types of chips that will do this. Uh, but then at the end of the day, you know, for me here showing you something, <laughs> lots of pin count. I don't want to be wiring something up. So I went ahead and just grabbed one of my little uh, FPGA slash CPLD boards laying around and let me show you that. Since I have these little PC boards I've played with, uh, uh, in this case a 144 pin uh, CPLD, uh, it happens to have LVDS capabilities. Um, called a Cyclone 5. So I went ahead, I made a quick schematic. This is a 25 megahertz input. I just made sure I got the right pin number for the clock coming in. And then I made a counter. It's programmable or definable. I told it eight bits and I ran the eight pins out. I actually ran them out so I could do single ended and differential if I wanted to for the purposes of this video. So let me show you how I actually told it. It's an LVDS. So here's the pin planner for it. Uh, I simply went to, here's out one, out zero. And uh, I go in and I tell it, I want to make it one of these voltage specifications. And the LVDS was one of them. I select it and it went ahead and assigned two pins to it. They're next to each other, pins two and three. And here we see that it put an, an in to denote the negative going or the inverting one and the out and the positive one. So I have out zero in two wires and I'm going to program it, throw it to the board. Let's go look at it on the scope. Here I've got the circuit board on the bench. Uh, I had to tape things down and stabilize them pretty good. Uh, there's no room in here for big long jumper leads or any of that due to the frequencies involved. So I had to do some finagling to get you a good clear picture on the scope. Here's the circuit board here with my 144 pin uh, FPGA. I'd already built a, in a ribbon connector and the pins are like right next to each other on the PC board layout and in the cable and they come down and to my scope probes. Now, you'll notice the big old jumper lead that we're used to for ground is missing. This is a big inductor, more wire, more inductance. Here's what the tip looks like right now. If you can see that there's a tiny little wire hook to the collar of that, and I'm using that as the ground. This is the signal source. Small inductor, big inductor. Small inductor, small resistance to, smaller resistance to, hyper, to um, signal changes to AC, and uh, better for taking a look. Before I show you the scope trace, I want to show you what you're going to be looking at. And the next page is right out of the TI's 
LVDS Owner's Manual. This is a, a great resource uh, on that you can get online. And the other manufacturers have their manuals too, but uh, this one's got a nice picture on the front. This is pretty standard LVDS stuff. We see our constant current source, 3.5 milliamps, and the direction is gated by what looks like a pretty standard H gate, like you might control the direction on a motor. Uh, this way we don't have, like I said earlier, the current slamming on and off differently based on whether we're making highs or lows. The conductors, typically you try and keep them the same length, the same width, the same impedance, and in each other's mutually inductive field the, with the currents canceling, which lowers the overall inductive reactance, which lowers induct or, uh, impedance in general. And noises then tend to impinge on both equally, so they can be subtracted out equally. Finally, we go across a termination resistor as shown here. This resistance is uh, typically picked based on the media. It turns out ribbon cable and a lot of PC board layout hovers around 100 ohms, so it's shown here as a pretty typical value. Done correctly, we should end up with about 350 millivolts uh, for the LVDS standard. So I'm going to put the scope probes, again, not measuring the ground, but I'm going to measure against each other using the math and the scope called uh, differential mode. I'm going to put one on this in input terminal and one on this one and measure the difference. So let's take a look at that. Here's the output on the scope and you can see that the blue lead, uh, which happens to be on the inverting input, happens to be uh, a little ugly. Uh, if you look at the time that it's got a valid high, it's not the full high time. It's lost probably about a fifth of the time. And we see other noises uh, kind of getting in and out there. And this is kind of typical in spite of my best efforts to get the probes in with nice short grounds and whatnot. And this looked really ugly with the big, big ground lead, trust me. Let's put the two signals together so that we see that LVDS kind of image. So here I've slid the two signals together to show the ones and the zeros. Uh, and this is this image we've been seeing of the two signals superimposed. But when I add the math to it, and matter of fact, I'm going to remove the yellow and the blue. And even though I got a divot there, which I'll tell you, if I move that scope probe, that divot's going to move around. You'll see that I have done a good job of recovering the signal. And uh, here's our LVDS signal at 25 megahertz after, through a ribbon cable as measured through three foot long oscilloscope probes. So hoping by now you're kind of getting the sense that the LVDS type or the differential signaling is pretty ubiquitous. And there's a scary word to try and say on camera. Uh, it's it's everywhere. Look at an HDMI connector, you'll see it. Look look at a SATA, look at the pinout, you'll see it. You, you see a plus and a minus together on different signals. There's your pair. Ribbon cables. It actually stops. It stops. Rib, it stops twisting, so you can have a connector. But that's a twisted pair of ribbon cable. So just because we're doing lots of them doesn't mean we can't do the uh, twisting and the and the signaling. Now I didn't talk about it, but you don't just fill one of these uh, cables up with just the signals. No good. You got to keep the impedance down. You got to keep your ground reference around. But mostly you want grounds on both sides of you. Keep you grounded. Keep keep your impedance down. So I'll go. Uh, positive, negative ground, positive, negative ground, and I'll burn off a whole bunch of grounds in, in one of these when I typically do this. So, Ethernet cable. It is UTP after all, unshielded twisted pair. We used to use coax and stuff. Now we can just twist the heck out of these. And in fact, these things are, are gauged. Uh, one of their specs is twist per inch TPI. And as you might expect, more twist per inch takes more copper, makes it heavier, makes it harder to bend, but it also increases the how tightly coupled those two uh, conductors are, which in increases its uh, uh, desensitivity to noise, okay? So, and when doing your own uh, uh, things around the bench, I'm always twisting wire. I'm twisting power cables, I'm twisting everything. I could tell you, I could tell you uh, stories about noise getting in. Just to show you, if you don't know how to, or if you uh, don't want to manually twist your cables, you can use a drill. That quick, you've got a twisted pair. So I do this all the time. I have drills just for doing this. 
So that's it for this video. I did, uh, hopefully you get an appreciation for uh, higher speed signaling uh, technologies. And in this case, the low LVDS type of things. Uh, there's a lot of reading you can be out there. I'll post the links for this. But this kind of rounds out the technologies that I was going through as I made my way literally down the list which you might find an FPGA using for its output capabilities. So Bill Hurd from Hackaday, low voltage differential signaling. It's your friend, it's fast, it gets us there.